Thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the people of Glasgow, it is my immense pleasure to welcome Scotland's Community Heritage Conference to the city. And this is, of course, a topic that's very close to my heart. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of you might have seen in the, the papers I used to be a piper, and that is my, how I came to Scotland originally. But I do also have a background, my professional background, uh, as in, in my early careers, was actually working in archaeology. I was working for the Museum of National Antiquities in Stockholm for about 10 years and very much with what we called um, living archaeology or practical archaeology. I was part of the education department there, and we very much liked to try things out and do things. So everything from flint napping to cooking in Viking style, etc., uh, was very close to my heart. It was a great, great uh, privilege of working in that establishment, as well as a few other ones. And um, as then as an archaeologist, it was very much living archaeology in the respect that um, been having my friends were archaeologists and uh, a lot of people get married with archaeologists etc. Uh, relationships formed not un uncommon and also hobbies were very much in relation to archaeology and one of my hobbies um, was to be sailing on a replica of a 12th uh, century ship very similar to a galley actually from the Hebrides. Uh, so uh, that was really living archaeology in many aspects. We're actually doing it not but, uh, only for hobby, but also for learning how those ships were sailed and practicing that. And there were some, some reports written in regards to that from the people who were leading the reconstruction of that ship. Uh, anyway, back to my pre-written speech here and talk a bit more about Glasgow, etc. Uh, we are gathered here, of course, in the Technology and Innovation Centre, a building which transform the way academic business, industry and public sector work in partnership and through the seeking modern solutions to passing, pressing social and economic um, challenges. And this building is especially, stands on a special place, I would say. It's on the site of a medieval Franciscan friary. And it is a fine representation of how Glasgow's past and present converge and informs uh, our past, present, and future. And I do think it's really important for this, remembering the past whilst looking forward to the future. And if I have any wishes for the city, it's actually to highlight a bit more of the medieval uh, background of the city, which has might be not been highlighted as much as other parts of the historic uh, fabric of the city. This also underlines, I think, the, very much the, uh, the importance of diversity and richness in our cultural heritage, and that it highlights all the different parts of it, uh, and not leave bits that are hidden and forgotten, but highlight them again if we realise them. So um, for visitors from elsewhere, there's one thing I always like to highlight for, for them, and that is actually the necropolis not far away from here as well. Uh, and that's one thing as I very closely remember the first time I came to Glasgow myself, which was some point, I think it was 83, I can't quite remember which year it was. Um, we used to come to Edinburgh and stay there. Um, that was through my piping interest coming to Scotland, travelling to Scotland a lot before I actually moved over here. Uh, used to come to Edinburgh and stay there, but after spending one weekend in Glasgow, that was always the main focus for us to come, came here and travel out from Glasgow after that. And I think it was in 1983. And I came over here to see, uh, from Edinburgh then, to see the Glasgow School of Art, uh, Charles Ray Macintosh, obviously, and the Burrell Collection, which had recently just opened then. But whilst here, of course, did all the other touristy things as you do when you come to Glasgow. I go and look at the cathedral and spotted these fantastic things that were up on the hill behind there. And during that time, I think it still was closed off. You weren't really supposed to go up there. Uh, but I think we managed to find a way up anyway and had an, a very interesting walk around up there and viewing the monuments, not just the monuments, but of course the fantastic view out over the city as well. Um, so this fantastic necropolis now has been restored and is much more available than it was then. And of course it was established by the Merchant's House already in 1831. And the John Knox Monument, who is uh, up on the top of the hill, very visible from Farfield, far was erected already in 1825, so that actually predecesses the, the, um, the burial ground as such. Uh, of course, it is also modelled on the Père Lachaise in Paris, the very famous uh, churchyard there. So, of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Glasgow is steeped in history. This year, the Year of History, Heritage and Archaeology, is an opportunity for all of us to shine a spotlight on the existing and very interesting community heritage projects 
that's being run across the country. And here in Glasgow, we have an ambitious tourism and visitor plan, which is very much built on the culture and heritage. That is one of the very fundamental of this new tourism and visitor plan we have. And up to 2023, we aim to attract another million visitors to the city. Uh, and position Glasgow as the gateway to Scotland. So we are not just marketing Glasgow as such. We really want to see that Glasgow is the gateway to Scotland. And it's interesting, someone I met who was just visiting and staying in Edinburgh, but also going out and doing a few other things. Uh, they said, oh, I don't understand. We had to go over to Glasgow to take the train when we were going to go up to various places. And that is really the truth. You need to come to Glasgow to get the train back to West Coast and, and to lots of other places. So uh, we are a gateway in that respect to m most of Scotland. Glasgow, in this um, new tourism and visitor strategy, we have uh, prioritised uh, some core themes and number one in that list is heritage. And of course, we also have contemporary art, music, Charles René Macintosh as its own point, coming up for the 150 years anniversary of his birth next year. That is a very, very important uh, point. And another pillar is the world class sporting events. Glasgow is now positioned as actually the fifth best city in the world to run a big sporting events. Uh, so, as just adding to those accolades, we are collecting and have been collecting the last year. Uh, also, with the conservatoire now being seen to be the second best, uh, so the third best conservatoire in the world. Another interesting uh, conference, and uh, which taking quite recently, is actually one about dark history. And our own dark history takes in the city's dubious wealth creation linked to the slave trade. Indeed, our iconic Glasgow Museum of Modern Art, Goma, was the, a former tobacco merchant's house, his private residence. And these tobacco, cotton, and uh, later textile merchants made their fortunes trading with slave work plantations. And their involvement clear to see in our street signs like Glasswood Street, Virginia Place, and the Merchant City. And another person I met who had uh, recently come back from Jamaica uh, been there talking about history and heritage and slavery in some respect as well. And um, there was a person whose name was uh, McKinnon, I think, the surname, a Jamaican. And they were talking, and he was wondering, well, didn't know where this name came from and didn't recognize it at all. Uh, so when this, my friend who was over there, were talking to him and saying, well, what do you think? Why do you think your name's Art McKinnon? and they couldn't figure it out at all. Uh, and then they started to look at the, at the map and they saw lots of Scottish names on the map of Jamaica. And of course it is because we had this very, very close interlink with uh, the West Indies through the trades and the trade of the proceeds of the slaves and the plantations there. As I mentioned earlier, the city recognised Macintosh as a key uh, culture and tourism asset. And uh, I'm delighted that next year, the 150 years anniversary of his birth, we will launch a 10-year Macintosh plan celebrating his life and work. And a lot of the celebration next year, because the, um, the Glasgow restoration of that will not quite be ready for the 150 years anniversary on the 6th of June next year, um, the Will of Tea Room has very, very uh, timely stepped in in that respect and will be a centre of focus for the celebration. Uh, the restoration has been moving on with uh, quite a high pace, and um, but it will be finished, it will be ready for the celebration on the 6th of June next year. And of course, the Villa of Theorems and Soccer Hall Streets, they are doing a uh, restoration of that in very, very in detail. I would say I've been very impressed when I visited them early on when I was open up or uh, celebrating, yeah, open up the first phase of the developments or oh, of the restoration. And I was very, very impressed of the depth they've gone to in uh, academically coming to the right uh, solutions when it comes to just yes, researching paint uh, features that's been in there and restoring and as much as possible. Um, and it's, they're doing a fantastic job in that respect, I think. So that is one of the pillars as well, of course, in the two strategy and one of the big things we have here in Glasgow to celebrate in regards of, of uh, cultural heritage. Uh, I know when talking to when developing this uh, visitor strategy and talking about Glasgow as a city and the, the Macintosh heritage, I know comparing to Barcelona, we have far more uh, things left from Macintosh, far more of the Macintosh collection. Uh, well, sorry, in other collection, we have four more items as well as we have the architectural, far more than they have of Gordy in Barcelona. 
So if you can join up thinking about how we display all this and get it together for, we have an absolute world-class offer to people coming here. So Glasgow, as well as being a city with a fascinating history and heritage, we are also famous, of course, for our friendliness and our hospitality. And I know people who come here, they are really commenting on that. And I can only vote for that myself, having experienced that, coming here as a tourist to start off with, and then taking the step of moving over here in 95. And the way I have been welcomed at every point in time, in every context I've been uh, coming into, has been absolutely fantastic. And I had that confirmed again early on this year, being elected as the Lord Provost of Glasgow, and a huge privilege. And I'm extremely thankful for all the people who have chosen to put the trust in me uh, in, in doing that. And I remember walking across the York Square not long after I was elected. Very the chain I'd been across for, for an event on the other side of the square, walking back into the chambers. And a guy came up to me, well, coming close to me. I could see my, my officer, who's always had with me when I'm wearing the chain, coming a bit closer. And, mm, what's this going? He was a bit, you could see, had been through a few things. Had a colourful life, you put it that way. And he came up, hey, you're, you're the Lord Provost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're from Sweden, yeah! And that's what I got. And that's just Glasgow for us. Thank you for coming to this conference. Enjoy it very much. Thank you.